Mona al Tahawi is a prominent commentator on the Middle East. She's been our guide to the Egyptian Revolution since it began nearly a year ago. She suffered the same kind of beating herself when she was in Tahrir Square a few weeks ago. She's safe and sound in New York. Mona, thanks for talking to us again tonight. And I tell you, as I mentioned at the outset there, hard to watch. We just showed a snippet of that video, and there's l much longer versions of it. Hard to watch. What, as you watch that video, Mona, what goes through your mind, especially since you were on the receiving end of those nightsticks? Well, I got to tell you, Mark, I've not been able to watch all of those videos and, and very few pictures. And I, I just, I can't because it brings back to me exactly what happened when they broke my arms and sexually assaulted me in Cairo three weeks ago. So it's been very difficult. But, but the one positive thing that has come out of this footage is that it has once and for all ended this lie that the army is a friend of the people. Mm. It is not. From the very beginning, even though they didn't open fire on revolutionaries and protesters, the military in Egypt were detaining people and torturing them because if you remember we talked about this back in March when they subjected female activists to those so-called virginity tests right. which are essentially sexual assaults so that systematic sexual violence and the brutality that was made very clear over the past four days have been there from the beginning but so many people have been in denial and the military itself has lied through its teeth about that kind of brutality so we finally see the military for what it is incapable of ruling sadistic and brutal and it must step aside immediately for civilian leadership you know so often and it's, it's a sad statement perhaps for, for, for those of us working in the media we see these violence and the protests and, and it seems like another day on the protest line but it's when we see that woman on the line on the ground being beaten like that that everyone appeals to everyone's humanity from your experience is the military targeting women and if so why the military is continuing a, a, a system that Hosni Mubarak basically installed in 2005 by which they use systematic sexual violence to shame, silence and humiliate women as a way of getting them off the street because they understand that in Egypt if a woman is sexually assaulted in this way, is uh, abused and undressed in this way, she uh, is expected to basically just kind of crawl back home and say, I'm never going to go out on the streets again. And they are basically clearly misunderstanding how passionate and how determined and tenacious Egyptian women are to make this revolution succeed. The, the Mubarak regime failed in keeping women off the street back in 2005. The military failed when they subjected women to virginity tests in March in keeping women, women off the street. And as you see, this woman who was out yesterday, after all of this, she was still out. And there are still women out today. I follow so many young women in Egypt who are in their early 20s. I'm thinking of a particular one who is only 22. And she somehow balances her exams and Twitter and being on the front lines in Tahrir. And she knows that this could happen to her and she's still there. So this systematic sexual violence is definitely being used as a tool against Egyptian women. But again, the military misunderestimates, as George Bush used to say, women's tenacity and our insistence on staying in the street until our revolution succeeds. Well, as we mentioned, at the beginning of the year, the military stood beside the protesters. I wouldn't say they were fighting for, but they stood beside them. Who now, who today is going to stand with the protesters and defend them? Well, I think it's, there's a really interesting shift that is happening in Egypt now because it was, it was difficult say five or six months ago to convince the ordinary Egyptian that the military and the people were not one hand as as the saying went you know I mean I was on Egyptian television three weeks ago when this happened to me and I was saying they broke that hand that this military and the people are one hand so I think it's very important to get the average Egyptian who's not involved who's not on the front lines in Tahrir to understand that our struggle now isn't against Mubarak because he's gone but it's against a military dictatorship that is just as brutal and in some instances more brutal than Mubarak so it has to be the Egyptian people together. And there are initiatives now. I, I, I know of one initiative at least in which intellectuals and politicians and, and thought leaders are coming together and calling for presidential elections to coincide with the anniversary of January the 25th, the beginning of the revolution, so that we have a civilian president in place to take over and to tell SCAF, the Supreme Council of Armed Forces, to leave leadership in Egypt and for the military to go back to the barracks on February the 11th, which is the date that Hosni Mubarak was forced to step down. So it's this kind of civilian-civilian alliance that we need in Egypt. But just as importantly, we need the allies of the military across the world 
Washington, Ottawa, other capitals across the world, and they need to understand, stop exporting weapons to Egypt, stop selling weapons to Egypt, stop your military aid to these brutal sadists who are stripping women in the streets, who are stomping on their chest, who are breaking our bones. We also need the international community to understand you must be on our side, the people in Egypt, and not on the side of the sadists. Mona, well, always good to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Thanks for having me, Mark.